Well, someone who spared time for us this evening to share her thoughts on what's happened in the last couple of hours to that really brave 23-year-old Lok Sabha speaker, Amira Kumar. Thanks very much, ma'am, for taking out the time for us. You were among those, among very uh, early leaders who went, met this 23-year-old and her family in, in hospital. You described everything that she'd been through. Today, I would imagine, like the rest of India, you share all that grief and, and, and even anger at the turn of events and, and what's transpired. Yes. You know, uh, Natasha, I have not seen a thing like this ever before. Uh, it's a girl, 23-year-old girl. We, nobody had ever heard of her before. And uh, a heinous crime is committed against her. This, this, this abominable violence. And suddenly, the pain, the anguish of this girl becomes the pain and anguish of the entire country. She, she has shaken the conscience of the country. This kind of a thing I have not seen. And what a courageous girl. You know, you, you have just mentioned that I had met her parents. And I cannot help uh, telling you how much I admired them. This kind of a sophistication, uh, this kind of dignity, Restraint, control, strength, I have rarely seen. Today, when she is no more, I want to pay my condolences to her. And uh, I want to pray that God should give them strength to bear this irreparable loss. And I also want to pay my condolences to her friend. He put up such a brave fight to protect her. What a brave man, what a courageous man. So, but uh, this is a sacrifice which this girl has made. I wish she would have lived because she has become a symbol, symbol of the honor and indomitable courage and strength of women of India. I wish she had lived. But even if she's not living, she'll live in our memory, especially in our conscience, in the collective conscience of the people of this country. She's going to live. Well, she's going to live. We're, of course, going to make sure that that happens, oh, hopefully. Uh, we, we, we talked about her bravery. We talked about her, her fight. That's, of course, one reason why she got brutally attacked, because the men who did this to her said, said that they got upset that she was putting up this kind of fight. But there are all those people, of course, this evening saying that most of us wouldn't have half the stomach for the kind of fight. Through it all, she told her mother, I want to live. Yes, yes. And she wanted to live. She wanted to live. And the parents, they've said that this should not happen to any other girl. That's all they said to me. And uh, so after what has happened, I think uh, we should have a new society and a new India. Her, her sacrifice should not go in vain. We should, the, the country, you know, uh, what I see, you know, people are saying that people are angry, they are on the road. Yes, they should be angry. Uh, you know, when if they don't get angry now, when will they get angry? Mm. So and you're saying the anger is justified? Yes, and it's it's for the right cause. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Many times I wouldn't say that, mm. frankly. Mm. But this time I'm with them. Mm. I'm angry. Everybody is angry. Everybody is upset. Mm. There's so much anguish, mm. pain. But this should get channelized into something very constructive and positive. Mm. And this should get channelized into making a safe society for women. Mm. Otherwise, this anger will just go waste. Just that would as be as perhaps our best tribute to her. Uh, that would be the best tribute to her. Just as her sacrifice should not go waste, her symbolism should not go waste, so is this anger. It should not go waste. Right. You know, we're talking, ma'am, about uh, society changing. There are all this talk about the churn in society, especially among today's youth, a lot of the anger that you're talking about. This, you, you're not a political veteran. Do you also believe that 
it's time for the politics to change. There's been so much focus on the response of the government. Without getting into details of all of that, do you believe that we're all constantly learning lessons on how we respond, on how perhaps with the wisdom of hindsight we are learning, we ought to have responded in the first place? Do you think this is, this is, this is the kind of churn that we are seeing even in politics? Yes, yes, it, is, it has affected everything. Our thinking, I hope it has affected our thinking, influenced it for the better, because uh, our thinking matters a lot. Mm. You know, everybody is talking of the law, mm. make stringent law. Yes, stringent laws should be made, mm. but the thinking should be changed. Mm. Yes, the, uh, the arrangements and the order, the law and order should be more, more strict. Mm. Uh, that, of course, mm. but then the thinking should be changed. In the same way, when you are talking of it, in political terms, mm. as you are saying, churning is going on. Mm. But then we should also uh, realize that what has happened is a game changer, as you've said earlier. Mm. It is. Mm. We should sit back and think how we are going to uh, not always yeah, uh, respond, but also take initiatives. Mm. There's so many things, you know, uh, uh, not just uh, uh, just. Uh, respond to a situation, but uh, anticipate hmm. and take action, hmm. yes. yes. That's a very important point, Mara. So do yes. you believe that we need to sort of look ahead and be able to yes. see the kind yes. of yes. reactions that something like yes. this or, yes. or any other situation because would Because in politics, uh, the, the, those who lead are there hmm. and the work of the leader is to to anticipate, to think ahead, mm. and then lead. Mm. Mm. So we should be uh, in a position to do that. Right, ma'am. Thanks very much for taking our time to speak to us, ma'am. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.